Hey everybody, Dave Clark, aka the Pattern Guy. Hey, uh, sorry for the short absence. Been really busy personal wise, so uh, like I said, I want to try to get a chalk talk out every uh, Wednesday and then a video like Sunday of things going on. But today we're going to welcome to another chalk talk, but we're going to kind of combine them today. I'm going to do a little chalking and then talking, and I'm going to show you. I'm getting into this uh, cylinder pattern, so I want to start showing you how I'm going about doing that, okay? Um, like I said, the cylinder pattern is definitely not an apprentice job, okay? And it, it, this really is a, uh, it, it's a difficult job, it is. I mean, I've been doing this stuff 100,000 times, like you know, close to 40 years here, and I, it, I mean, it's, it, they're, it, they're hard for me to do, okay? And uh, so one of the big things I'm going to start, I'm going to get a little bit into draft. Um, traditionally when I do these, uh, as I'm getting into this job here, the cylinder job, it's way different than the way I usually do them. So there's a lot of different things um, going into it. I had it in my mind. I try to plan ahead. Like I said, pattern making, you got to plan ahead hugely. Otherwise you paint yourself into a corner. Um, I've been trying to plan ahead, but this one, like I said, is just way different. We got to change a lot of different things. Like I said in the one video, I'm actually working off of two different drawings plus the casting. I got to kind of combine everything into one, one casting here. So um, I'll start showing you how to do that. One of the things I want to mention right off the bat, real quick too, before I forget, I started... Uh, um, sorry for blubbering last week. Um, I, I just that's I just do. Um, it's uh, something. A uh, few guys, you know, uh, wrote in. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm getting into uh, having a hard time figuring out how to respond. Um, there's a gentleman. His name's Roy. Uh, he, you know, put a nice heartfelt little note on, and, and I couldn't figure out how to respond to him. So. Roy, thanks a lot. Um, you know, it's really appreciated. I hope things work out with you and your wife too. We'll, we're thinking of you guys. Okay, so really thanks for anybody that sent me wishes. Appreciate it. Really good. Uh, Saturday, um, Joe's daughter had a, a little uh, memorial service at church, so we went. And it was kind of nice seeing a lot of the old guys I used to uh, work with. Mo most of the people there, were, it was family uh, from, from the people. It was really nice. But anyhow, back to this. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about draft. Okay, draft angles. There's a, a couple different kinds of draft too. So we'll get into a couple different kinds of drafts. So I'm kind of integrated into what I'm doing here with the cylinder. Okay, so I don't have a cameraman today. Bear with me what I'm going to do. I don't know if you can see this, but what happens normally when you're doing a pattern, right? So you'll say, okay, you got to determine what draft you're going to do. Okay, in the drawing video we did, in your title block, if you get a pattern drawing, okay, a lot of times they'll have the draft angles on there that the, the, the engineer wants, okay? Not all the time. Like I said, a lot of times you're working off a of machinist drawing, so you, there's no drafting. So you got to determine what's going on. It's really important for several reasons, okay? Because one of the reasons is is a lot of times you add machine stock onto a casting, okay? Um, the more I'm, you know, the, the more age I'm getting, uh, things are getting tighter, closer. Uh, you know, years ago when I, my dad, when he first started, and even when I first started, if you had a ton of machining on something, it was no big deal. You know, nowadays, you know, they're getting more into efficiency. Um, the foundries don't want to, uh, the more draft you put on something, the more metal, the more it's going to cost. Then you got to machine that stuff off. It takes longer. You know, you're wearing more tools out, so there's all just, like I said, we're going to have to go over and over. There's just so much stuff into this trade. It, it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling. It, it really is. So, um, one of the things to determine draft is 
like I said, on the title block, I'll tell you, it's if you have a pattern drawing, okay? Another re thing that you do is, a lot of times I'll just ask my customer, I'm like, how much draft do you want on something? And it, especially for bigger jobs, you know, when I do stuff for, you know, the guys, real big stuff, you know, you need quite a bit of draft on, on the patterns when you're doing the real big stuff. The thing with that, though, is what happens a lot of times is um, I was doing some work for a foundry. They did, everything was huge there, just really big stuff. I can only do, I can do fairly big stuff in here, but it's, you know, I don't have much room. Plus, it, it's, you know, that stuff gets heavy. There's a lot of wood in it. It, it, it gets really heavy, right? So one job I was working on one time, I asked the boss, you know, how much draft you want it? Well, the guy's not a pattern maker. You know, the guy pushes pencils and, you know, things like that. So he's like, just put two degrees on it. Well, here it was a three foot tall pattern, okay? So what I did was, I, you, you can't do that, all right? So I don't know if you can see what I'll do. I will pick this up in a, in a bit, but I put a three foot tall line on here, okay? This is a square line. Hopefully you can see it. I, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll just come, yeah. We'll explain it first, okay? Then I'll bring you back over. All right, so I put a line on there at two degrees, all right? And it, it kicks, literally almost kicks the draft out twice as much as what a lot of places do. I do work for another big shop in the same thing. The guy's like, hey, put two degrees on it. So he actually has a pattern maker that works there. And basically what I do is I do their overflow. So I work with their pattern maker a little bit. He's a pretty cool guy. But we were talking one day in the pattern shop. The pattern guy was right there. And I said, yeah, how much draft you want on it? And the, the, the guy, the owner of the company is like, I'll put two degrees on it. So I kind of look at him and I was just about to ask him the question. The pattern rate goes, hey, look, quarter inch per two feet, okay? So I got a two degree line on here and I got a line at a uh, quarter inch per two feet, okay? And I'll show you the difference. I'll pick it up real quick. Uh, let me come get you. Hang tight. Okay, guys, here I am. Um, like I said, I don't have a camera guy today, so hopefully we're, we're, we're doing this good here. So here, here's the demonstration, okay? Um, basically what it is, I got my two degrees would be the green line, okay? It goes three feet up. And then the red line is just a quarter inch per two feet, okay? So you can see how much more metal, I put twice as much metal, on that casting if I were to do that and like I said a lot of times the machine shops don't want that extra metal on there it's you know they're, they're gonna be doing a lot more work in that so so that's one of the uh, the um, ways to determine draft okay now I'm gonna get into I'm gonna show you since I got you in my hand it'd be easier to show you this uh, right now so I'll show you what I'm doing on on the cylinder castings Okay, where I'm going on that right now, and then um, I'll put you back up and, you know, hopefully we'll yap with you some more here. All right, so here's, um, here's my layout, okay, for the cylinders. All right, and what, you know, this is my front view here, it's my side view, and this is the top view, okay? Now, I'll tell you, and especially with this, pattern right here I want to lay out everything I can on this job all right with that being said all right I'm gonna get started the first thing I'm doing on this job I'm making the pattern first and then I'm gonna turn around and make core boxes later okay so basically I just drew or laid out here what the pattern is gonna be I don't have this will be cored out, but it's it's not detailed yet. Okay, this uh, they actually there's going to be a whole core here because you can see you know I won't be able to get sand out here. So this has got to be cored in here, and actually that that comes around here. This here it's like a ledge right there. So I got to have a core print coming out here. Okay, 
so we'll get into that down the road like i said we're going to go with this is really difficult one we're going to go bit by bit by bit okay so first of all how i'm getting started i'm going to do my cylinders okay these are the cylinders all right and this is the saddle okay this is where the tank sits on actually the forward part what's going to sit here it's actually called the smoke box um, you know, the, the smokestack will be on top of it and that, you know, hopefully down the road we'll be able to show you some, you know, I want to start building these things, okay? So, how I got started was, you, you go piece by piece by piece by piece, alright? So, I got the, this piece here, this big round piece right here, okay? That's this piece here, okay? So, it's five-eighths of an inch, okay? So I got some 5 8 inch stock out, all right, that, that goes in here, all right, and then I laid it out here, okay. Now this one, a lot of times what you do, I got my, this is my parting line here, okay, I put center line, it's supposed to be parting. So I'm going to part this down here, and then it's going to have a little bit of an offset, okay, to pick up this, and then out, okay, and then here, here's a parting line over here too, okay. So, what I did was, the, the reason why I'm parting this is it's cylindrical, so, you know, we want to go to the tangency of the radius, right? And then we got to blend this part in with this radius up here, so I want tangent to tangent, okay? But I got to have something to attach the cylinder to the saddle here, so we got this piece coming up here. So what I'm going to do here, from here, I'm going to go tangent to the radius up here. But I'm going to go, actually from here, I'm going to go straight up, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go straight up here, all right? And that way I can just put my saddle right on there, all right? So, and that, that interprets to, okay, real quick, this, all right, I got, this is my 5 8 piece right here. That's this line right here, okay? That's that outside line. That's this 5 8 piece. That's this here, okay? Now these lines here, all right, these lines, that's four inches here. That constitutes to these dotted lines here. I didn't put, there's a little radius in here, all right, that dotted line, so this is where I'm coming down with that, all right? So that's, that's where we're doing 3D, right? This is 2D right here, we're making, 3D. All right. So, like I said, I cut this out five eighths because that's that's where the stock is right there. Okay. So from here to here is four inches. All right. So I got my four inch wide stock. Okay. Cut a piece four inches. All right. So here's my parting line. So I got a piece here. And then a piece here, this is glued up. I don't know if you can see the line right there. Okay, because this is, I think, three and a half inches, something like that. Okay, so what I did basically is I laid my layout up on the blocks here. Okay, and always put your center lines, and if you can, wrap them all the way around. Okay, I'm not going to on this because, like I said, I've done these before. I, I should be all right. I suggest that everybody does. Just just put your center lines all the way around, okay? So I'm gonna cut these out, these blocks out, and then this is actually what I did with these two five eight pieces. I did the same thing like with here. This is a separate piece, and this is a separate piece. I clamped these together, but it was kind of hard to clamp these. So I put a little dot of glue here, a little dot of glue here. And I'll just take a chisel and pop these out, okay? And then we'll glue these five eight pieces onto the end of that four inch wide piece, kind of sandwich that. All right, so I'll cut those out. I'm gonna cut these out, and I'll show you where I'm gonna go from there. All right, before I do, real quick, like I said I didn't. I'm trying to keep, like I said, you gotta lay out as much as you can, okay? But this particular. Um, Thing, it's going to get so complicated there's so many cores and everything if I lay every single thing out right now on this it's going to get way confusing so like I said I'm starting with the pattern so we're, I got enough information on this layout here 
to get going on the pattern, okay? So a lot of times, like I was saying before, one of the tools we have, I had to put a radius in here, right? So a lot of times, you know, it's hard to get a pair of dividers in there, you know, and you'd have to have the same line because these are, at, you know, they're both, they're, you know, there's two of them. So I'm gonna have to put another line up here to get a center, make an arc. So what we do is we do these, these are, the radius gauges I showed you, I have a set, okay? I can't remember if mine's a Fowler or Craft. I think mine are Craftsman or something. Little radius gauge sets. Traditional sets go up to half inch, okay? Make your own. I got a sheet. These aren't the best, okay? Because they're made out of aluminum. So, you know, when you're scribing stuff with a, your marking knife and that, you, you take chunks out of them here and there. But, I mean, I've had these for a pretty long time. They, they, they're still useful, and they, they didn't cost me anything. I made them on my own, you know. So, I tell you what, let me uh, put you guys back up on the stand. I'm going to go cut these out, sand them, and then I'll show you how I'm going to put them together. Be right back, okay? Okay, guys, back. All right, I uh, cut these pieces out, okay? And uh, another thing I forgot to, to remind you, remind myself here, is I got two different parts, right? Label them, one, one, two, two. Okay, so there's basically my cylinder, okay? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna split these. All right, a lot of times we can just, uh, let's see if we can do it over here. here. Um, yep, there you go. Just popped it right off. See that? Okay, this one's gonna glue on here. All right. This one's gonna glue on here. Okay. Um, I gotta measure out some center lines and that, but that's basically what that's gonna be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this pretty well on here, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it set for like 10, 15 minutes, let the glue set, and then I'm gonna clamp it. Okay, if you remember what I said the one time, uh, if I just glue this and I clamp it right away, you know, things are gonna move. So I'm gonna let the glue set a little bit first so that when I put the clamps on, it's not gonna move, okay? And then I need to, these have to be clamped because this is gonna be, this is a permanent piece of equipment, okay? So we wanna build it as rugged as we can, all right? So I'll do that, I'm gonna get some center lines in that. Before I do real quick, um, I was going to use this as an example for another type of draft, but it's, it's not quite there what I, I want to demonstrate. So I'm going to try to do some chalk talk and uh, show you what, um, what, what the other type of draft is, okay? So th this is just regular draft, okay, what I demonstrated before. So what I want to do next is... Um, when you do round parts, like cylindrical, like these, okay, it's basically cylindrical. There's two, two cylinders on top of each other. But when you do cylindrical parts, okay, what happens is um, 
you know, a lot of times like corporate, let's just draw something here real quick. All right, so here's, here's my cylindrical part. Okay, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, all right, we'll put a corporate on there. Okay, corporate, corporate. Oops, wrong way. This way. All right, so this is my cylindrical part. Okay, so like I said, you always got to watch how much draft you put on things because. You know, a lot of times, especially nowadays, you know, machinists don't want to machine, they want to machine as little off as they can and everything, all right? So traditionally, what you do, this, like I said right here, okay, this will be casting, all right, all this right here, okay? That's casting, and then this will be core print right here, okay? So normally on core prints, put as much draft, try to put as much draft on everything as you can because that's way easier to mold, okay, right? But like I said, we just got to watch with the machining and stuff like that, right? So with the core prints, the ends of the core prints, you're not, they're not getting machined, right? So you can put, you typically I'll put five degrees draft on them mostly, okay, five, 10 degrees, okay? So what I do is I'll, I'll have my cylindrical piece and then I just jam it up against the sander at five degrees, all right? So sometimes and when you're doing a uh, quick pattern, let me see, give me a second, let me grab that one cylindrical thing that might help out here, hang tight. Okay, I got my cylinders. All right, now this, as I picked it up, is not gonna demonstrate what I wanted it to do, okay? but. All right, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, so being that this was turned, okay, this has on the ends here. All right, this is gonna be my core print. Okay, this is my pattern right here. All right, so I gotta have draft here and I gotta have draft here. Okay, so automatically on the lathe, when I turn my draft, That'll be called radial draft, okay? So basically it's, you get the same degree of draft around the whole end, okay? And then what we do is we just cut the core prints and then I'll just take it over to the scene or same five, 10 degrees on it. It's no big deal, right? Okay, so say I'm doing a job like this, I'm not, um, turning these, okay? So what I gotta do, I'm gonna have to have draft on the pattern here, okay? I, th this is why I'm gonna try to chalk talk it. This particular, it's gonna be radius on the outside and inside I'm gonna put a fillet so we won't have draft. All I have to do, to do a little bit on the outside we're gonna put a big core print on here I'm still figuring out how I want to do that so but what you do for um, say we sanded this round cylinder out okay so what you do is let me try to blow this up all right we'll just do a half at a time okay so here's here's my parting line Okay, so I got my core print. We'll just make this core go all the way through here. Okay, core print. All right, oodles of draft at the end. Okay, so then I've got my pattern. Okay, uh, we should have dotted this line. That's a hidden line, right? Dotted line. Okay, so here's my pattern. Okay, so where I gotta have draft is what what you could do if it's not a big deal they're doing one like big cast iron pattern or whatever what you could do is you could just sand draft on there okay but if you can see you know hopefully you can see this i'm going to be t putting a ton of draft down on by the time you get down to the bottom Machine shop might not want that. 
pretty much when I do it, anything like this I, I always just put radial draft on it takes a little longer to do it and that but it, it just the pattern looks way uh, um, it looks way nicer I mean it's just kind of looks it looks hokey right so the, how you get the radial draft all right say this is right here say this is 12 inches okay so what you do is you sand your cylinder out and you add another eighth of an inch okay per side all right so what you do is you're out here to this length all right let's do a side view here in view i should say in view there's your parting line right so here you get your core right there all right here's your pattern okay so what you do this is an eighth of an inch longer on each side right so you strike your arc in, in you know this would be you know both sides so what you do you have them together you get your center you strike your arc how big your core print's gonna be okay so that's going to be right here, right here, it is right here, all right? So from here down, right here, that's all this surface right here, okay? That's going to be perfectly square. That's going to be square, okay? Then you sand your core print out, glue your core print out, all right? So now you got this rectangular piece there there's no draft on it right so what you do this do this before you glue your core print on okay you do this out so you got your radius strike down here okay your radius is there so you go from here to this eighth inch and you put a line and then you just sand that out right there okay and then that's the same it's eighth inch draft all the way around okay that's radial draft all right it's it's kind of hard to explain on the chalk talk here it, it would be better if i had i i get, i'm gonna have to get something bigger so that you guys can see you're not going to be able to see it on this i don't think but this you know you'll get the you'll get the gist of it here and like I said, it, it takes time to do this. Um, when you do it, depending on how much of a distance here, I mean, you, this could be anywhere from like, you know, quarter inch, you know, this could be a quarter inch here, it could be four inches, all right? So depending on, you know, what this is, depending on what tools you use, a lot of times I just use hand tools. It's just easier for me. My buddy Blaine, um you know he goes over on a sander i i will too but he's just way better at sand than that he, he can get it all the way around you know you'll you'll dig in down here a little bit things like that but your core print's going to go up there you know fill in a little bit of a hole with bottle it's not not that big of a thing you know but he, he's really good at doing a sander like a lot of times what i'll do is take my block plane and do it or um, like i said i got my grandfather's one chisel it's a really sharp t chisel so what I can do, I can just, it's just way easy for me just to skin that little, you know, quarter inch off or whatever. You know, if it's somewhere half inch under, I'll, I'll do it that way, you know. So that's radial draft, okay. To me, you know, I, like I said, I try to keep things as professional and try to make things as nice as I can, like the traditional craft uh, ways to do things in that. So... Um, that's radial draft for you. Mama's going to work. See you later, hon. Um, it's uh, uh, just way more professional looking. Um, it's the way I like to do things. It's the way Joe taught me how to do it. My dad taught me how to do it. You know, so that, that's just the way I like to do it. And it's it's a thing where um, you know, the second place I worked at. I mean, they were. We did a lot of big things, and it wasn't so, uh, you know, with big things in cast iron, cast iron castings have um, a bunch of scale on them and things like that. So 
it's his attitude the owner of the pattern shop there his attitude was hey you know what it's it's cast iron cast and he used a six inch house brush to paint stuff and i mean that paintbrush strokes around the patterns i i don't like that it comes out on the casting i should say right yeah, especially aluminum aluminum really picks up any, any defect in the pattern so i i like to try to do things that's what i'm trying to convey to you guys i want you guys to do things as nice as neat and you know professional as we can do things all right it, do, it doesn't take you that much longer to do it the right way all right so let's just try to get in the habit right off the bat just do things the right way take take 10 15 minutes longer and um you know go because what what happens and that, that's what i told the guy uh second guy at one time you know i, I was a uh, foreman in the one shop and that i used to deal with the customers at arrow a lot and um it, it we did top 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 quality work in that pattern shop i mean everything was just top notch and then i went down to i mean these guys were using six inch disc grinders they'd send a pattern with you could see the sander disc sander marks in in the patterns you know and, and uh I, I told the guy you know you you want me to do pattern work like that this is going to go into construction full time i'm not doing patterns like that so please this is why I'm doing this. Let's do things as professional as we can, okay? And I, and I told the guy at one time, like, you know, your quality, you're gonna be here for a job one day and the foundry's gonna pick you or somebody else and that's gonna be a determining factor if you're gonna get that job or that other guy's gonna get that job, okay? And it does and it has, okay? And numerous times I have had uh, customers tell me, they love the quality of my work. All right, so it's a little bit of fat headedness. Um, I'll get into that one day too, but it's, uh, um, you know, you just be proud of what you do. Bob, my first boss, he told me, you know, make something where, you know, you're proud to hand it to the customer. Don't do it where you're just gonna chuck it up on your loading dock, knock on the door and take off. Okay, so let's do things quality. Uh, radial draft. To me is the way to go just do it that way just get in the habit of doing radial draft on everything okay so except for like i said core prints don't mean anything because they're just core prints okay that that has nothing to do with the casting out here all right so get into doing these things um like i said i'm not going to do a series on uh these cylinders but what i'll try to do is um I've been having a hard time connecting with Joe. Joe's been very busy. He's doing an apprenticeship of his own. I don't know if I told you he's uh, going to become an electrician, a union electrician guy. So he's been very busy with his apprenticeship. Um, I try to get him here as much as I can to help me out. Uh, like I said, he's been so busy lately. I've been busy. We just haven't had time to connect. So I'm going to try to get the camera back off him as much as I can to film as much of this process as I can. I don't want to make it a... Uh, series like we did with my buddy's bandsaw part okay um i'll just get it as as much as i can i'll, I'll get this out here um i do i'll i will make sure like i said there's going to be a couple cores in this thing that they're, they're pretty trick cores they'll be offset partings so i'll show you a, a different way how to get offset partings in that too so it's pretty tricky and, and then you can actually relay that offset stuff to patterns and, and you know things like that so there's this like i said what i'm going to do next with these i'm just going to glue these ends on um just let them sit i'm going to clamp them and then those will pretty much be done i got to do some other things and i'll start working on the saddle in between so i, I tell you what i'm just going to cut it short here to this day um we'll send this video out and what i'll do is uh try to get the camera back and then we'll um you know be farther down the road with this i'll film as much as i can okay guys so everybody have a good one out there and again thank you for your sorrows for uh joe for me and um you know please subscribe i need you guys all right we'll talk to you later have a good one now well, like i said being here they are stepping over these guys right at my bench Get those leg lifts going on there, right? 
So Ranger, like I said, he's a little bit of a cripple. He, he can't make it out, but this guy here, Seamus, he's my old dude. Hey buddy, how you doing? Look at Seamus, where were you buddy? He went on a walk. Look at all the mud all over you. Seamus just loves the mud puddles. He, he hops in the mud puddles all the time. It's like, like Finn, the lab, the chocolate lab, he's inside with his mama. He, he loves the water too, you can't keep him out of the water. Him and Seamus love to go swimming. Alright guys, man, have a good one out there.